carpet cleaners coming next week. Yahoo! I know. It's well loved. What? Oh, they're ready, but we're not, okay, cool. Are these on? Are these on? I'm, I'm pointing live streaming, guys. Are they on? Okay. Just checking. <laughs> Behind the scenes at Par Ministries, the untold story. Give me a countdown. Yeah. Let me know, ladies. Talk to me. Awesome, awesome. I, uh, the flurry of pregame, you know, huddle and all that good stuff. Welcome, everybody, to Monday night's Christ Center Addiction Recovery Battlefield Training. I'm Mark, and I am really uh, excited about tonight. I'm excited about the journey that we've been taking through our pillars. And so, if you've been following us on our live streaming, you'll see really quickly that these are not the 12 steps. Um, these are all about mentoring in Christ and um, guiding in recovery, discipling in Christ and mentoring in recovery. So with that, let me say, a uh, let's, let's open this up with a word of prayer and then let's jump in. So. Heavenly Father, we just thank you in Jesus' name for tonight. Father, I thank you for uh, just your wisdom, your revelation, your inspiration. Lord, that I would say whatever you need me to say and what you would have me say in teaching this. Thank you for everybody who's tuned in for open hearts, open ears, and that it would provide encouragement, empowerment, and uh, just just continue growth, and we give this all to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're gonna uh, hopefully tonight we're gonna have a number of things. Number one, you may get to uh, learn some things that you did not know about your authority in Christ because we absolutely need to do that. The other part of that is you may get some answers to some confusing things that maybe you've been taught when it comes to faith believing and the manifestation of God's power. Um, and so hopefully that will be good. And uh, we're going to learn at, at, at the very end, the last part of this, the driving force and, and why we even do this. Why do we even care um, You know about this idea of walking in legal and spiritual authority. And we'll, I'll save that towards the end. So the first thing I want to do, we're, we're going to move kind of slowly through this because I want to speak to this on each frame. So before we go to the image, um, I want to kind of set it up and then we'll go there. One of the things, and and guys, sadly, um, many people aren't being taught this stuff uh, nowadays in the churches. There have been, you know, how you can have kingdom finances, how you can ha be a good neighbor and, you know, mow in Jesus' name. And, and that's all great and everything. But what about walking this out as a believer in these days? And so you'll notice on the title, it says spiritual warfare and legal authority. Because we need to know both, we need to understand both. So there are three realms that I'll go to in a moment. Um, we have what's called the heavens. Okay, have you ever heard? Oh, look up into the heavens. <clears throat> okay, that's our atmosphere. The stars, the moon, the sky, those are the heavens. And then there's another level called the heavenlies. And, and I'm going to go to that in a moment in Scripture. But that's beyond. That is the spiritual realm that is not seen by man. 
okay? And then there is heaven. That's the dwelling place of our Heavenly Father. All right, so now as we go, let's go ahead and go to that image so that we can discuss that. Um, the, first, the first one I want to talk about is this is kind of our foundational verse. And it's in 2 Corinthians 10.4, and it says this, The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Now, if you look at other translations, it will say, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. Those are spiritual. We are engaged in spiritual warfare. So let's go back. Let's go to the next uh, visual. Now let's go into this, these realms, what that's about. Okay. The first one is our natural realm, the five senses realm in the heavens, in the heavens. Okay. And the verse is Genesis 1 14. And God said, let there be light in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark the sacred times and the days and the years. These are the heavens, the lights in the heavens, the stars, the moon, the sun that we can see. All right. The next level of that is the heavenlies. Ephesians 8, 12 says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. So you have the heavens, then you have the heavenlies, and finally you have heaven. Second uh, Chronicles 621a is, hear the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray towards this place, hear from heaven, your dwelling place. That's a dwelling place of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is heaven. So we have the five senses realm, which is the heavens, and I'll explain that in a moment, the second realm is the angelic, the unseen, angelic, demonic realm, which is the heavenlies. And the third is heaven itself. Now, before we come back to center, I want to bring your attention to the purple notes. Okay, our authority and legal right comes from God. When we get born again, we have a legal birthright to certain things legally and within the realm of spiritual warfare. How that affects the angelic and demonic realm is we have legal authority by namesake. What is that namesake? The name of Jesus Christ. There is no higher name. Every knee shall bow at the name of Jesus. All right, even demons tremble at his name. And finally, in our five senses realm, we have legal authority by license. All right, let's come back to center. I'm going to explain what that means. <clears throat> if I go and I drive a vehicle, I may be able to drive a vehicle. Um, I may have the ability, I have the resources and, and everything. But if I have not been given legal authority to drive that vehicle guess what might happen? I'm going to encounter some legal issues. Okay. And so we're going to talk a little bit about um, what, what is legal and what's not, because we've, there's been a season of teaching out there where people are, you know, they're driving over meridian spiritually and taking shortcuts and doing all this stuff where they don't, they not have not been given legal authority to do that. And I think in explaining that, what's going to happen is we're going to clear up some confusion. All right. So <clears throat> the first thing I, I really want to kind of focus in on is in Christ centered recovery, not secular, but in Christ centered recovery. Number one, as a believer, <clears throat> despite what you might see 
uh, on TV or your favorite bookstore, Your Best Life Now. Did I say that? I thought I was just thinking that. So what happens is we can be sold this idea that, well, if you become a Christian, <clears throat> all of a sudden, what you've done is you've gotten this really awesome real estate deal because you get to go to heaven. And you don't really have to change your lifestyle because Jesus is all about love, 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 love. You've heard me say this before. The Word of God says God is love. It doesn't say love is God. Love without truth is just emotion. All right? So the other part of that is this. <clears throat> When we are born again, we have cer certain legal rights that we get from the Father according to the Word of God. Now, I'm going to say this. This is always, always, always our final authority, the Word of God, not some bestseller, not some whatever. And my point is this. When you get born again, when you come to Christ, when you surrender your life to Christ, you have to understand this isn't about being fear-based or pessimistic <clears throat> because we have a, a lot to glory about because this world is not our home. But when you become a true born-again believer, how many know you're going to encounter spiritual warfare? Okay. So we don't, we don't shriek in fear and go, gosh, I'll just hide in the you know, closet until Jesus comes back. We need to learn our identity and our, our authority. Not for our ego or so that we can be all powerful, but so that we can be effective in being ambassadors for Christ to reach others with the love of Christ, to set the captives free. Read Isaiah 61, and you will see, uh, and I'll just hit on this real quick. In Isaiah, I'm going to go there. <laughs> Didn't plan that, but I am going there. Okay, Isaiah 61. Now, here's the prophecy thousands of years before Jesus quoted this in the temple. Isaiah 61, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and freedom to the prisoners to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. That's our God covering us. He cares for us, okay? And to comfort all who mourn. Now, fast forward a few thousand years, Jesus is in the temple. He reads that very thing, and I'm going to paraphrase it in modern English. Guys, what I just read to you, that was fulfilled as I was speaking it because um, I'm that guy. <laughs> I'm him. I'm the one. And that's when they freaked out and wanted to kill him. It's like, who do you think you are? Well, really, I'm <laughs> the son of God. All right. And so <clears throat> the reason that we're doing this, why, why are we doing this? Okay. Because number one, as a believer in Christ, we're going to encounter that, but we need to know our true identity, the authority that we have, and so we're not just walking around blown back and to and fro, okay? So let's go to our next image. Um, so I want to explain this a little bit. In, the, in God's realm, God's sovereignty not our intensity determines what that looks like. As we, Now, I'm going to say these, and I'm going to explain them. I like to lay all the pieces out, then we'll put it together. So many times what we can happen, many have been taught, well, you know, I have power in my words. Yes, that's true. But it's taken outside the boundaries of the word that I can create things with my words. I can speak things into being with my words, okay? Well, here's the deal. Um, there's only one God, and we're not it. We don't have the power to create, okay? There's only one God that can do that. And so as we're walking in spiritual authority 
And what that looks like, whether it be in spiritual warfare or praying for people, we always, always, always have to remember it is not, the, the, the end fruit of that is not based on, well, if I had enough faith, okay, and it would take a whole two hours to explain um, when it's talking about a mustard seed and moving a mountain, those um, are, he's using that as illustrations. There's no record of a mountain moving in the Bible, okay? But what he's saying is just a little bit of faith as you walk this out. And again, I'm just laying out the pieces here. So God's sovereignty has the main deal. Not me shouting, uh, do we have authority? Yes. But what's happened is, is, well, I'll come back to center. Let me read these. Uh, operate by directive, not perspective. Okay, we got to function in the unction, not because I want to be the world's greatest healer or I want to be a spiritual guru and a big deal and watch me cast out demons. That will get you in trouble. That's called pride, okay? And finally, obedience is a precursor to authority. So let's talk about these three things, okay? Number one is God's sovereignty, and then number two is the, uh, f- I call it function in the unction, okay? Let's come back to center, and finally, obedience. And again, before we get into more of the nuts and bolts in this, it's really important that I lay out some foundational things, because there are people who have been um, confused or frustrated or disappointed because they weren't taught the whole counsel of the Word. Um, there is a movement called Word Faith that, that came in, and, and what was happening is uh, somebody would go up to pray for somebody, and we're always supposed to pray for somebody, but the response was, well, they just didn't have enough faith. Oh, okay, so I failed as a believer, okay? Um, Paul. He had a thorn in the flesh. It says that he was sent a, a messenger from Satan to buffet him, to harass him. All right? Three times he went before the Lord and said, Lord, get, just please get this out of here. And he went on to explain it wasn't hemorrhoids. Okay? We got to stay in the Word. People are like, well, I think he had hemorrhoids. Well, maybe he had digestive issues. No, he had a buffer. Uh, a, a messenger of Satan to buffet him so that his ego would not get out of line. He would stand humility um, because he, he was in a position of a lot of authority. He wrote the majority of the New Testament. And, and so he went to the Lord and he said, my grace is sufficient unto you. Okay, now again, as this laying out thing, Have I prayed for people and seen them miraculously healed? Yes. Have I prayed for, I mean, instantaneously. Have I prayed for people and seen them progressively healed at an accelerated recovery where normally take three months and they're going, dude, it's been a month. What what kind of vitamins are you taking? Okay. And then I've seen scenarios where I've prayed for people and for one reason or another, it, it, it didn't, it wasn't happening, okay? The bottom line on that is I do not know the full mind and sovereignty of God's will in a situation. And where people have been abused or hurt is if they've been in a situation, um, and I believe in healing, I've seen it, um, but when maybe somebody hasn't received that, the implication in this movement of, well, you just didn't have enough faith, okay? And um, that's not the case. And when you're praying for somebody, you have to function in the unction. What does that mean? I don't, it says lay hands on no man suddenly. So I go by directive of the Holy Spirit, not because I, you know, I want to just be a, all that in a bag of spiritual chili Fritos, you know what I'm saying? You don't just, you don't move 
unless you get that unction from the Lord to move. Not emotion, but direction, okay? Um, and the last part is obedience. If I'm walking, and again, if you're just jumping in, I, all I'm doing is laying pieces out, and then we're going to put these all together, I promise. If I'm walking in disobedience out of fellowship with God, okay, and, and what I've done legally, I've given the, the enemy a right to harass, okay? So let's say I've been delivered for something, from something and I'm walking with the Lord. The minute you get born again, you have a, a cross on your back. <laughs> you know, you're marked for the kingdom and you're an enemy to the enemy, all right? So then if I go back out there in the enemy's camp and I'm out there dancing with demons, so to speak, and I go, I don't know, my life is just so attacked <laughs> because we're, we're in territory we shouldn't be. And what happens is his covering, his favor, and his protection comes in as I walk in obedience to that. Read Psalm 91. If you got a pen, just write it around. Psalm 91. It's called the Warrior Psalm. When I was a chaplain with the U.S. Corps of Chaplains, I would send the soldiers over in Afghanistan a, a scarf, and it had the 91st Psalm on it, so they could read it, and then they could just shove it in their shirt and go, you know, whenever they needed to go. So let's take a look at our next one, and then we're going to slow down a little bit. So the idea of the, the teaching that I'm going to create these new things, I'm going to take authority over the world with my mouth, okay? Do we have authority? Yes, but it's designed, it's assigned, and it's released by permission and assignment, okay? Um. When it comes legal by birthright, it says, I am the Lord and there is no other. Beside me, there is no God. What does that mean? I'm not God. I, I can't create. And if somebody's teaching you that you're a, a, a mini God, that's a false doctrine. I'm a son of God. I'm a child of God. I have the inheritance. I have the inheritance of Christ in me, the hope of glory, right? But I'm not God. That was the thing that Lucifer did. He said, I will be like the most high God. So one of the things as we're looking at this is we've got to look at in our authority what, what we're not. And number one is, yes, we are sons of God. We are children of God. We have an inheritance. We have the authority to use the name of Jesus Christ. But we do not have the power to create. And, and what has happened in this movement is, for example, and I'll show you how it got into witchcraft. So let's say I'm lusting after somebody's Mercedes. And so I go with this idea the power of my words, I'm going to speak it into fruition. I've planted my seed faith money to Brother John's ministry, and I know that since I, you know, put that, he promised me 500-fold and a hanky that's going to glow in the dark or whatever, and I'm not mocking the Holy Spirit at all. That did happen with Paul. They got healed by even the handkerchief, but what was happening is witchcraft was being taught. Here's how that works. I'm going to lust after that material thing because God says I have power in the tongue and, and I have authority when I speak, and that was misplaced, misquoted, put out of line. I'm going to begin visualizing that in my mind because here, let me take this scripture out of context. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So I'm going to get that vision of that Mercedes in there. And then I have that Mercedes. That Mercedes is mine. Money come. I saw a pastor say that one time. Money come. Just like he was pulling a, a thing, and it, uh, like a slot machine. Okay? Works the same way in witchcraft. What you do is they will cast their circle. They will write in their, their book of shadows, their vision, their spells, their that. And then they begin creating incantations to get what they want. The only difference is 
they're they're straight up. They're they're trying to get it from the demonic realm. The false sense is, oh, that's just the Lord is going to provide this Mercedes for me because I deserve it. And a lot of people have been hurt and burned. And it has done a lot to discredit the authentic authority and power in the spiritual realm in the name of Jesus Christ and the gifts that we have. That's by, not by mistake. <laughs> okay? Let's go back to that same image just for a sec. And now let's take it the next one, though. In the spiritual realm of the angelic and demonic, he says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, freely you received, freely give. Okay, so coming back to center, are there people who have been raised from the dead? Yeah, but they're usually in foreign countries, and they're legit. There have been people that have been dead and they were prayed over and brought back to life. I've never done that. <laughs> okay? Not that it can't happen, but um, the, the thing that we're talking about now is that in the name of Jesus, we have authority to pray for people. We have the authority to pray for them for healing. Okay? But we have to remember that we don't do it so we can go, well, I'm a healer. I got a healing ministry. What's my ministry? In the United States, we get so addicted to, well, what's my ministry? What's your, what your ministry is, is to obey Jesus, <laughs> right? That's your ministry, okay? Now watch this. What's God's will for my life? How about we just make that shorter? What's God's will? Let's start there, <laughs> right? What's God's will, right? And so I want to talk about the, the angelic and the demonic realm. Now, here's, again, here's what's really sad, is we have many churches out there that are very, very lukewarm. They don't want to touch that stuff. Well, and here's usually the excuse. Well, we don't want to glorify the enemy. We're not glorifying the enemy. It says we're not ignorant of his devices, all right? Do we walk thinking about him? No, we focus on Jesus. But I got to tell you what, if we encounter that, we want to be ready. Okay, why do you think they give us armor? Oh, we don't want to talk about that spiritual stuff. Well, let's just take Ephesians 6 out of there and the whole armor thing because, you know, apparently we're not going to need it. That is not accurate. So, a couple things. In the angelic realm... Number one, we do not idolatrize them. I don't know if that's a real word, but it works. Idolatrize. <laughs> Thank you for calling idolatrize. Um, we don't worship them. We don't go into this hyper uh, emotional spiritual where we're looking for angels' wings and we're looking for all these things the, the, where we're looking for the... Um, spectacular, okay? Because it's not that the spectacular can't happen, but what happens, people, it, it says miracle signs and wonders will follow them that believe. It doesn't say those will believe who follow miracle signs and wonders, okay? There are people just like in Jesus' day, the only reason they hung out with Jesus, they wanted to see miracle signs and wonders, okay? And so, the other thing with the angelic realm is, are they real? Yes. Um, the Word of God says that, you know, be, be aware of who you're entertaining because you may be entertaining an angel, okay? And in this, in this world uh, that we live in now of, of this um, just incredible ignorance of God's Word, not because people aren't smart, they're not being taught, um, what can happen is uh, people don't even know about that. Secondly, we do not command angels. That was another thing. I command the angels of God. They're a created being to serve God and God alone. Can I make a request? Father, I pray for your, those healing angels, for warring angels. I've encountered that before. I'm not making it up. You can believe it or not. But, and, and it wasn't uh, a, a big spectacular 
spectacular thing. But I, I knew, okay? Here, here's the fact. Um, we don't command angels. They are sent to minister uh, to God's children, and he has warring angels. If you could see, imagine um, a backup traffic jam uh, on the L.A. freeway, and everybody's on meth, okay? That's what the angelic, demonic realm is like right now. The warfare has increased so much, we don't even see it, because the angels of God, they are busy, man. They are fighting all the time with the demonic realm. So let's move into the demonic. Again, I'm just laying pieces, and then we'll put the pieces of the puzzle together. With the demonic realm, um, one, one misconception uh, can be that they're just all over the place, screwing around, doing freaky stuff. You have to understand, before Lucifer became Satan, he was uh, the general of the angelic armies. There was a protocol. There was an army, there were battalions, there were platoons, there were units, there were special forces, very highly organized, just like the angelic realm, because he's going to try to mimic what the Father does. God is not the author of confusion, of order. Now, what's really interesting, even in that sense of military structure, um, there is... Uh, self-deception because the enemy's a liar and there's no truth in him so that you know if, if it wasn't for that total uh control of satan they'd they'd gnaw each other's arm off that because that's the nature there's no life there's no love in them nothing you know what can we go back let me let's play that can you go back uh one patricia and we'll take a look at okay so for the struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against... Now watch this. I'm, I want to teach you something about structure. Against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Okay, back to center for a sec. In the spiritual realm, in the demonic realm, just like you would have privates, sergeants, lieutenants, captains, LTs, colonels, all that kind of stuff. Um, you, there are, when it talks about principalities and powers, those are demonic de demons that are of a higher rank. You have, you'll have uh, demons that are in charge uh, over a city or, a, or to harass a ministry or whatever. And again, I'm not giving more authority and power to them, but you got to know you got to know, or you're just going to walk in ignorance. Okay, so um, they have assignments, just like the military has assignments. You have uh, demonic forces and angelic forces assigned to cities, to states, to countries, to regions. The nature and profile of a um, principality that is over this country is different from... Uh, the, the, now I don't want to say the nature, but the, the mission, the MOS, of the, uh, in the Middle East or over in Russia, they have different jobs. So in our area, and again, if you're new, you're watching this for the first time, this is not milk toast, sippy cup stuff. We're, we're, our, our mission, our goal, our heart is through this. Uh, especially in our sixth pillar. We're moving from focusing to the flesh and the emotions to walking in spiritual authority with the end result being that we are ambassadors for Christ, reaching out to the broken. But if we don't know our identity, if we don't know our authority or the weapons of our warfare and the boundaries and our legal rights, we're not going to be effective, right? So let's go back to that same, same one. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. So let, let's talk about the five senses realm. Okay. In the five senses realm, 
we go by our sight, hearing, taste, touch. Um, what did I leave out? Uh, yeah, our smell, our sight, our hearing, our taste, and touch. Okay. What's really ironic is that uh, we're so used to completely relying on that as evidence that we need to be taught about not only the spiritual uh, authority that we have, but the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was not put in a box after the day of Pentecost and said, well, that's good, let's lock it up. Okay, good job, 12, nice, nice deal. Now we're going to box the Holy Spirit up. That is, that is not scriptural. As a matter of fact, let me go there because I just sent someone, you know, sometimes... Uh, I'm having to learn Acts Romans. You do sometimes. I get these little downloads, and so I gotta. Um, oh, I know exactly where I want to go. Thank you for your patience. So here, here's the scenario. Um, it's going to be in Corinthians, and I want to go to. Okay, I I hadn't planned on sharing this, but I want to go here. It's. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and let's start with uh, verse 9. And these guys, Patricia didn't even know I was going to go here, so it's not up there. Um, but it says this, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away with. When I was a child, I spake as a child, spoke as a child, thought like a child, reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I did away with child th childish things. Now watch, I'm going to read this really slowly. Now your translation might be just a little different. For now... Right now, we see in a mirror dimly. We only have a dim, it's like looking with a, a cheesecloth in between there. We can only get a small image of that. For now, we see in a mirror dimly, but then, and I'll come back to the then face to face. Now, I know in part, but then... I will know fully just as I have been fully known. When is then? When Jesus returns, I won't need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I won't need to be able to have word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning spirit, because here we are again. When that which is perfect comes, and it's, he's not speaking about the Bible, okay? He's speaking about Jesus Christ. When that is perfect comes, then the partial will be done away with. Compared to the full knowledge being known even as you are known, the gifts of the Spirit are precious, but they're like just tiny infant things compared to what will be known. The reason I say that is because we have to understand that when we get born again, it's not just about, well, okay, I'm born again. And, and now I'm just going to try to trudge in recovery and, you know, one day at a time for the rest of my life. And if I miss a meeting, I might get drunk because I'm afraid I might get drunk because I'm not working a good program. I'm not good enough meeting. And I'm blah, 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 blah. Jesus Christ, the Word of God says, He who the Son sets free is what? Free indeed. Not an ankle bracelet that looks free, but is free. When I was in my active addiction, it's like in a jail cell. Imagine a jail cell. But what happens in secular recovery, they go, you can get out of the jail cell, but you're always sick. You're never going to get better. You're just a sick alcoholic. Here's your ankle bracelet. See at the next meeting or your ankle bracelet's going to blow up. Jesus Christ set me free. He breaks the chains of bondage. But we have to understand that we have spiritual authority too. So let's let's move to the next. Um, let's move to the next one. First Corinthians thirteen two and three says, 
if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge and have faith that could move mountains, but I do not have love, I'm nothing. So I made a statement early on in the beginning. Okay? Our motivator in learning all this is not so we can impress our friends at the next, you know, Bible barbecue. By the way, I think I got a word of knowledge that you're allergic to mustard. No, we're not doing that, okay? It's about love. When Jesus ministered to people, whether it be a leper who need, needs healed, whether it be a young man who was bound with demons, whether it be somebody who was blind, it, was, it says he was moved with compassion. It's all about love. That's why, could you put up that, that Michelle thing? I want to share this with you guys. I don't know if you can find it. I hadn't planned on this. But I, I want to share this with you, and then I want to tell you why I chose this person. Do you have it? Oh, it's up. Yeah, I'm looking at that thing. So on the 27th of August, Saturday, the 27th of August, uh, we have a special guest who is coming, and her ministry is called Awaken the Bride, Spiritual Warfare Training, Equipping, Healing, and Deliverance. And I know that can be an intimidating word if you've been exposed to what I'm about to tell you. So mark that on your calendar. So let's go back to center. The reason that I reached out to this person is because they're was a comment, a sharing that I had picked up on that she was sharing that just stopped me in my tracks and moved my heart, and it was this. There were a lot of quote-unquote deliverance ministries out there that although, uh, the, the, see, Jesus, Jesus' name is still powerful. It has authority. So you would have individuals who were taking authority in these spiritual scenarios, but what was happening, number one, they were video, videoing them, okay? Um, I mean, some for training, whatever, but what was happening, they were prolonging this, this, this situation that they were going through with this spiritual warfare. Now, I can remember uh, Michelle saying, we're supposed to love these people. We're supposed to care for them. They're in bondage. This isn't about us making it. There's a guy out there. He has a cross and he, he, this metal cross, and he has this school of something or other. I, you know, and it's it's just really unfortunate because it's 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 really uh, to glorify the individual. Whereas Jesus, when he ministered to people, he was moved with compassion, moved with love. And he didn't play games. He said, you know, to, if somebody was oppressed demonically or whatever, it was like, shut up, get out, and you be free and go get something to eat. I love you. <laughs> it, was, it was that simple. It wasn't this, this big, you know, uh, thing. And so here's where I want to bring all this to. The number one most important and powerful miracle that takes place is when we surrender absolutely to Jesus Christ. That's our, when we say, Lord, I'm, uh, you know, even if he's not Lord yet, we go, Jesus, I need you. I, I can't do this anymore. I, my flesh is weak. I'm failing. I'm, I'm broken. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins to wash me clean, I believe that you came and that you died and that you were resurrected and you were crucified for me, that I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb and, that, and, and I ask you to be Lord of my life. Okay? Thank you for saving me. I receive your forgiveness, but I'm declaring you as Lord. Many people, you know, they like the idea of having a Savior, but I'm you know, that Lord thing. How about you save me and let me run the rest? Doesn't work like that, right? 
But the greatest miracle within that is when somebody gets born again spiritually. Literally, what takes place in that moment is that all authority legally that Satan had that he stole from Adam, let me rephrase that, that he received from Adam when Adam um, handed it over, he committed treason by keeping his mouth shut, not taking his authority. And what happens is when we come under the lordship of Jesus Christ, Satan's authority over us is terminated. But here's the catch. Many people aren't taught after that that they have authority now in Jesus Christ. They don't just, I'm just going to try to survive, you know, as a believer in Jesus and not get gang jumped by, you know, the enemy. It's like, no, man, let's go. Jesus said, on this rock, and he was talking of himself, Petra, not Petros, not Peter. He was not the first pope, okay? Jesus was talking about himself. He said, on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That's pretty powerful, okay? Because we have a mighty king. So the first thing we got to know is who we are and whose we are because of what Jesus did. Not because, you know, we have a PhD in systematic theology. That will not get you to heaven. He's not impressed with academics, okay? He's impressed with our heart. And then, let me tell you some of the legal rights and spiritual warfare that you have. We have the legal right to come boldly before the throne of grace. When we've fallen, when we fail, maybe we've been tempted and, and we tripped into the, the sin trap and we repent. The enemy will come in and say, you can't go in there now. You blew it. The Word of God says, come boldly before the throne of grace. That's where we obtain mercy. All right? Um, and it's not about our feelings. It's about what what he's done. We also have the authority of the name of Jesus Christ when we pray for people. But we have to, rem guys, there's just so much here. In one hour to try to do all this is really like trying to shove a roast down a baby straw, <laughs> all right? Not that you're babies. I'm talking about, you know, the food tube or whatever. In this Let's go back to the very beginning, the second one, the second one. Okay, remember when I was talking about the three realms? Okay, so let's, let's kind of bring this all together. We're going to talk about, first of all, I want to talk about the five senses realm. When we get born again, um, the first thing that we do, and this is part of the lordship, is we begin getting into the word. This is our battlefield, B-I-B-L-E, battlefield instruction book before leaving earth, okay? And so this word has all the authority, all the direction that we need as believers in Christ. So in this realm, our five senses realm, how many know the world is getting crazier out there? Guess what? It's all in here. But they're not teaching that much. Nah, let's just not go. Nah, we'll talk about, okay. Well, we'll be over here, you know, <laughs> getting our house in order. Hallelujah, right? So why do I say that? Because we don't have to walk in fear. We live in a scared world. But we can have comfort. Because we know the king, he's coming, we know how it ends, and we even know before all this crazy stuff gets even darker how that's going to play out. So we have encouragement and hope in this world. One of the things that's really important in this five census world, okay, how many know that our flesh really likes to be entertained and tell me stories and tickle my ears and all that? Stay in the Word. Stay in the Word. Stay in the Word. Stay in the Word. Did I say that? Stay in the Word. Okay. 
in the angelic and the demonic realm, number one, we do not have to fear the demonic. But when we're dealing with the demonic and angelic, God is not schizophrenic. He will not contradict his word. He's not going to say one thing in his word and do another over here. And I've seen some, you know, crazy stuff um, because he's not the author of confusion. That's not, that's not how he rolls. Every time, how many of you, you can't see it on the thing, but I'm asking our people here, how many, when you walked into this place, could feel the presence of the Holy Spirit? Because it, he's welcome here. We don't deny him. We don't put him in a box. And it's not about the spectacular. Occasionally, it gets spectacular when I pour my coffee by accident and spill it. But other than that, you know, God is not the author of confusion. Um, and here's what's happening all over the world is people, believers in Jesus Christ are connecting together. Um, and if you, man, I, here's what I'm going to do. I'm, as we move into our restoration, I, I may go into this a little deeper because you could go like three months. So I, I, I just want to give you this overlay, this overlay, and then we'll go in a little deeper about this because I know you have questions. There are people who come in who have been involved in the occult. So they know that the spiritual realm is real, okay? I, I, sadly, there are more people who have been involved in pagan and occult stuff who realize the spiritual realm is real than those who are going to church every Sunday. They go, nah, well, Jesus, yeah, but this, let's not do that, okay? But here's the problem they face. It's like they, they get a little nervous when you talk about spiritual things because it's like, man, I don't want to go back there. I, I, you know, I don't want to get involved in that insanity and craziness and all that stuff that I was in and there. Well, here's the good news. God's not the author of confusion. He's a healer. The present, the, you know, the Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He really is. Uh, I, I've seen the most, uh, how do I say this? The, the, the most dynamic manifestations of the Holy Spirit in the most calm ways. See, demons don't get impressed when you scream at them. Okay? They could care less. It's about the name of Jesus and the authority. And so, um, I think we need to. I, I, well, so, if you'll bear with us, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do a part two. Legal authority part two. Um, we could go, you know, 10 sessions, but we'll do that just to bring it together. So let me wrap this up. Let me put this, let me put this together. We are body, soul, and spirit. In our beginning pillars, we deal with many times the physical components that we go through in addiction, and they're real. We get it. We understand that, okay? Yeah, and then as we progress, we begin looking at the soul part. What is that? The mind, will, and emotions. That's why in our fourth and fifth pillar, we're looking at the characteristics of our sin nature that has kept us bound in condemnation and shame and addiction, not character defects. Why? Because it's a sin nature. I can do, if I, and I've used this before, I can go out in the yard and clip dandelion heads off all day, and they'll be back in three days. That's like trying to do an inventory of character defects because the bottom roots is our sin nature. But if you know who you are in Christ and that he loves you and what he did, we don't have to go towards that with shame. We go to that boldly. It's like I'm yanking the roots out of that sucker because I don't have to live under that. I could be free. I'm not a, you know, the enemy is a liar, and he'll tell you all these things. You did this, you did that, and that, 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 that. Well, when we, when we understand our true sin nature and that without Jesus we can do nothing, 
He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can be nothing. Enemy comes in and says, man, you remember when you did that and this and that? That was terrible. It's like, rather than going, oh, I've got so much shame. It's like, yeah, I know, man, but Jesus paid for it. And it's part of my testimony. You want to hear it? Oh, no, really? You got to leave? Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> right? Because I've been step free, dog. All right? <laughs> Get out of my house. Right? And so I just want to encourage you. Um, the, the third part is the spiritual. And it's not just about, and it's most definitely not, I'm spiritual. Okay? When people go, I'm spiritual, not religious, I go, which spirit? Right? I know some people that were into some dark stuff. They were very spiritual. Had nothing to do with Jesus or the living God. Right? So as we move forward, and we will, we're, we'll, we'll do a part two. But just know that we can physically become whole. We can become whole in mind, will, and emotions in our soul. And spiritually, we can walk in not only the, the peace of the Lord, the power and the authority of the glory, not, not so we can have, it's not all about the power, it's about His presence and our relationships so we can walk in joy and freedom. But that is, is very much available. And, you know, if you've been bound, ah, oh man, I'm just going to say this. So there have been people that have been involved in dark stuff spiritually. And so somebody says, you know what? Um, Jesus loves you. He wants you to, you know, and, and amen. But then they get taken to a, and I'm not dogging churches, but I'm, I'm calling out. Laodicean dead church, and they go to a church where they're getting a TED talk with a little Jesus sprinkled on, and you can have your best life now, and they have no power, because if they've been involved in that stuff, they can feel it, they, and that not emotionally. They know. Demons know when they're around uh, power and authority in Jesus' name. It can be a little old lady walking, bless you, honey, and that demon, whoa, 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 that's a prayer warrior. Get her away from me right? Not some guy going, spitting in your face and screaming and yelling, okay? That's just flesh. But if you're, you know, if you're that person, you got to understand that Jesus Christ is the name above every name. And I don't usually do this, but I'm getting this real song. You know, I, we've come across people who've said, well, yeah, but the, uh, I sold my soul to the devil. Let me tell you something. You cannot sell what does not belong to you. The devil just tried to convince you that he owns it. Right? You can't, that, that's God's. Okay? And so the, can you get harassment and all that? Yeah, but as you well know, I'm speaking to somebody right now, the whole idea of belief and faith works on that side as well. And if I believe that that authority is done, here's the good news. Jesus Christ is the name above all names. He can set you free. He has authority. There's no covenant. There's no uh, sacrifice, blood sacrifice that's been made or agreement in covenant with the enemy that cannot be broken by Jesus Christ just like that. And that's why the enemy works so hard to convince people that their identity, you're just a sick alcoholic, you're just a sick this, well, you're just weak here, you're a failure, you did that. Your past is not your identity. Our addiction is not our identity. That was crucified with Christ. You are beloved, you are saved, you are redeemed, you are sanctified, you're washed in the blood, you have authority, you're seated in the heavenlies with Christ, you're dearly beloved by the Father. That's, that's our true identity. There's a lot of spiritual warfare going on, but here's the good news. Uh, we, we've won the war, but we're, in, we're going to encounter skirmishes and battles, but we can have victory. Uh, the, last, the last thing um, that I want to share with you is, um, is this. God, God can't bless sin. 
So many times we want deliverance. We want all these different things. Okay. Does it take time? Do, do we go through a process with our stupid flesh? Absolutely. Um, but just know that in Christ all things are possible. Okay? But, but we've got to be willing to lay it down. we just got to be willing to lay it down. And so that's, we're moving into the power for abundant recovery. So I just want to tell you, thanks to everybody here. I hope this was helpful. I know we covered a lot in a little bit of time. And for everybody online um, watching this, we love you, and we're glad that you're with us. And God bless you in Jesus' name. And we'll see you next time. Amen? Amen? All right.